Hey, Broman. How's it going? Good. You know, it's crazy, but I realized I've never felt an earthquake before. Huh. You know, these days I'm a really heavy sleeper. I was at a sleepover the other day with some friends, and they did something really nasty. They drew this big, ugly monster all over my face. And then the next day I was walking around all day and I didn't even notice. That's yeah. horrible. And another day, you know, I was waking up and I was, I was going to my kitchen to have breakfast. And then all the cupboards were open. There were knives and plates and forks all over the ground. Wow. I thought it must be you know, a burglar or something, but I turned on the news and can you guess what they said happened? Let me guess, an earthquake potentially? Yes, a magnitude five earthquake. Oh, wow. That was so scary. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe you can make a seismograph. Uh, seismo what? A seismograph, something we could place in your bedroom that registers earthquakes, so we know exactly what happened during the night. Hmm. Okay, um, yeah, let's give it a shot. Okay, let's do it. Okay, Kevin, these are our main materials right here. So first we have our cereal box, cardboard sheet, some sand, and a plastic cup. And we have our glue, scissors, X-Acto knife, ruler, pen, and string, and a straw. So first, we're gonna take our cereal box. We have our ruler, and we're gonna measure here. So Kevin, can you please hold the ruler? Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna make it even on both sides of the cereal box. There. Okay, and then we're gonna do two at the bottom because we need two widths of rulers so it has room for the slot. And exactly the same on this side. Okay. Just like a picture frame. Yeah. Okay, we're done with that. And now we're gonna take our scissors. You probably maybe need some help for this, so maybe you should ask an adult. So we're gonna put it right here. Okay. Yep, and then now you're just gonna cut out the picture frame. And just finish off by cutting here. Okay, so we have our one side, and now we're just gonna flip it over and do the other side. And I'll need help from Kevin again. Now, we are gonna make the slots at the bottom here. It's about five inches, so we'll just use our ruler right there, and we're gonna use our X-Acto knife. So Kevin, I need some help with this because it's a pretty sharp knife, so I think it would be better if um, you cut the slot and I'll hold the ruler. So if you're at home making this, ask an adult for help. And to the other side. Okay. There you go. Right. And now, we are gonna glue the cereal box right to the cardboard. Take the glue, and I'm just gonna glue it. And I'll just put it on the box right there. Now, we are actually just going to um, make sure the cardboard box is all tight and secure, so we're just gonna tape it all around. And you might want to do this a couple times like to make it so that it's fully secure. Now, we are going to just take our cup. I think you just need to make one hole at the bottom of the cup, okay. two on the sides, and then on the lid, if it doesn't already have one, make a hole at the top. Side? Yep. All right. Okay. And then we're gonna take our string, make it about yeah arm's length. We'll just cut it. Okay. So now we're gonna put the pen through, and we're gonna put the string through the two holes Kevin just made. Now we're going to fill the cup up with sand 
Fill it up as much as you want, but just not to the very top. That's probably good. And make sure the pen is straight in the sand so it will make an even line. And this is how it looks. And Kevin, I'll need you to make a hole right at the top for the string to fit through. Okay. How's that? That's perfect, thank you. Okay, so I am gonna take this long strip of paper, it's about four inches wide, and slip it through the slots. Just pull it like that, that's probably good. Now, I'm just gonna put one of these, there we go. Now we're gonna put it under. Okay. Just make a simple knot, top, just like when you're tying your shoes. You might need to do this a couple times just to make it like so it's like exactly even because if it doesn't touch then it won't record any data and if it is touching too much then it doesn't work very well. And then we're going to take our little stick and put it through here and wrap it around. That way the cup won't just fall down, right? Yeah. Okay. And there we go. Our seismograph is done. Okay, finally. Now it's time to put our seismograph to the real test. So you're gonna need a friend, everybody. First friend will uh, pull the paper through slowly. And the second is going to hold the cardboard still. Okay, so let's try that now. And as you can see, that makes this beautiful straight line. And now, uh, Bronin is going to shake the cardboard a little uh, in this direction, perpendicular to the straight line. Okay, so on the count of three. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Earthquake! Woo! Wait, look at that. So when we were doing that, the heavy pen in the cup it didn't really move. Scientists actually have a name for this phenomenon. We call it inertia. inertia. Now imagine that there's a train, okay, with lots and lots of cars, so it's really heavy. To get this train in motion, you'd have to have a lot, a lot of energy. But once it's going, it's actually really hard to make it stop. You need to be, you know, Wonder Woman or something. Have lots of strength. Things that stay still like to stay still. And things that are moving like to stay moving. That's why our heavy sand cup stays still, even when the ground is moving beneath it. Well, everyone, do we ever have a treat for you today? We have a real seismograph. Hold it up, Roman. Okay, great. Well, this is basically just like a timeline. Okay, so it goes from left to right and then the next one, and the next line, and the next line, and they're all stacked on top of each other. Now, this seismograph can tell us three key things. The first one is about the strength of the earthquake. Now, you can see there's some, some peaks here, and the bigger those peaks, the stronger the earthquake. Cool, huh? Now, the second one is, depending on where on the timeline those peaks are, that can tell us about when the earthquake happened. And there's one more. You see there are two different waves here mm -hmm. for the two peaks. If we're able to get lots of, lots of seismographs all over the world to measure the same earthquake, we can actually figure out where in the world the earthquake happened. And we call that place the earthquake epicenter. Now the thing is, with our hand seismograph, someone always has to pull the paper through. I mean, even if you have a hamster and a hamster wheel and you attach it to the paper and you get the hamster to pull it through, you know, that wouldn't be very nice to the hamster. Fortunately, we have a better solution. And we can use smartphone technology. Scientists have actually developed a really cool app called MyShake. It gets your phone to measure changes in speed in all three directions. And this allows scientists to measure earthquakes from all over the world. Just like every human has their own fingerprint, every earthquake has their own fingerprint, and that's their seismograph. So what are you waiting for, guys? Install that app on your phone or your parents and help scientists predict earthquakes.